All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Scott Evans. We're at Wesley Healthcare this morning in Wichita, Kansas. Want to thank you for joining us as we talk to you, high school students, about some pretty cool careers that we have available here at the hospital. Um, I want to, uh, as you saw in the title, it was uh, PCT phlebotomy and our volunteer program. Because of the situation at the hospital right now, I'm not sure if our PCT, our patient care tech, will be able to join us. But we have these three great people joining us today to talk about phlebotomy and our volunteer program. So I have Carrie Cork, who is our guest services manager. She'll talk about volunteer opportunities. Ashley Heiser, who is our lead phlebotomist here at Wesley Medical Center. And then Martin Harding, who is our manager over phlebotomy. Uh, because of your schedule, uh, we'll ask you two to step off for a second and we will talk with Carrie. Thank you guys. We'll join you in here in a minute. But we want to uh, give Carrie an opportunity to here. Come, let's let's come forward. Let's get let's get bigger in this screen. No. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about the volunteer program, Carrie, because this is something that that you uh, that you lead that you had. So could you talk about that program for us? Absolutely. Um, so our volunteer program, um, our teens apply typically in April, and then they um, and then they they go through the summer months. And um, our volunteers get a unique opportunity to see the hospital from kind of a non-clinical side. Um, so we help patients and guests by pushing um, our patients and guests in wheelchairs by um, by being kind of behind the scenes in offices, by getting the opportunity to see all different um, departments within the hospital. And so um, it's not shadowing, um, we don't shadow, but we do get the opportunity to um, directly interact with patients and guests who come in on a daily basis. So for, for teenagers who are looking to uh, figure out how you talk to patients and, and, and want more experience talking to people, mm -hmm. yet not actually at the bedside, yes. this is an opportunity to to do that. Absolutely. And you you really get a chance to see kind of how a hospital runs, you know, from the process of coming into admissions um, to getting to where they need to go, kind of seeing that aspect of from a patient side, kind of how they go through the hospital in that process. Now, um, unfortunately, because of COVID, we're not running this right now, and we haven't run it since when's the last time? 2019. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. So, um, because of COVID, the program was put on hiatus. We didn't even have volunteers at all for a while, but we brought those back last year. Yes. What's the chances of bringing back the volunteer program in COVID? What What do you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know a lot, but um, I'm very um, optimistic that we're going to be able to have the program this year. Um, we always typically apply the first week in April. I'm going to be keeping that um, up to date on our website. Um, I'm going to get that updated soon and, and continue to get that updated. Um, so typically it's the first week in April that they apply. And then once they've um, been uh, accepted, they'll start first part of June. I, I I can't promise anything at all, but I, I am feeling optimistic that we're going to be able to have teens. They will have to be um, fully vaccinated, um, not just um, with the COVID vaccine, but also with um, all the other state of Kansas vaccinations for um, your safety and for ours. And uh, you do have to be 15 by June 1st. Um, in order to apply, um, but I, I hope that we are able to have it for you guys and hoping hoping for the best as always. And you can give us the link. I'll make sure I can get it to all the schools. Yes, absolutely. Okay. It's on our website, wesleymc.com. I'll get that updated here in the next couple of weeks. Check back, I would say mid-March, and I should have um, more of an answer at that point. Yeah, so yeah, check in with me. Um, how many hours a week can they volunteer? Is there a cap on the hours, cap on days? Would it, any cap at all? Yeah. So typically our shifts are four hours. Um, depending, um, 15 year olds can only work um, four to eight hours um, per week. 16 and above, it kind of goes a little bit more. Um, but typically my, my teens work um, two, two to three shifts a week. And then also, if you continue on into the school year um, and into the next year, we do have scholarship um, opportunities as well, um, which is great for those who are wanting to continue on and deciding that the medical field is for them. What, what can you tell us about the scholarship opportunities? Yeah. 
So um, it's for anyone who goes to a Kansas college or university that can apply. Um, they do have to have 150 hours of volunteer service and um, they um, they can apply. Um, they, it just has to be a Kansas college or university and um, they have to be um, going into the healthcare field. And it's through our auxiliary, which is in our, our adult volunteers, and um, they can get up to four thousand dollars with that scholarship. Wow! All right. Um, do you have examples, or I mean, I, I didn't ask you this in advance, but uh, examples of students who were part of your volunteer program and then later ended up getting hired as a in, in any entry level position? Does that happen? Yes, all the time. I see so many former volunteers and adults who um, have gone on to our patient care tech roles, have gone on to be respiratory therapists. I I ran into one yesterday. Um, she actually was volunteering the day that she found out she got into med school. And I was able to be a part of that, which, is, which was wow. awesome. And now she's in her third year. And so we have many people, even who before my time come by and say, I used to be a volunteer. It's such a great program. I learned a lot. So great, lots of great opportunities here at the hospital. All right. Uh, Karima, do you or your students have any questions right now uh, for Carrie? Because we need to, she's got to run off. It's, it's pretty, pretty busy here today. I appreciate that. At this time, we don't. Um, but what I'm going to do is I've asked them if they think of something later to write it down, and then I could forward that to you all. Perfect. And I'll, I'll make sure um, Scott gets out my information for anybody who needs it as well. Awesome. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you guys for your time. And anything else you want to say before you go? Um, I don't think so. Um, hope you guys learned a lot today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Carrie, thank you very thank much. You. All right, let's bring back in Ashley and Martin now um, to uh, to talk about phlebotomy. Um, let's have you both introduce yourselves, all step off camera, um, talk about how long you've been in your role, a little bit about yourself. And then we can uh, start going through the questions. Okay. All right. Um, my name is Ashley. Uh, I have been doing phlebotomy work uh, off and on for about nine years now. Um, I actually left the field for a little while and then came back last year to Wesley. Um, I have worked in both uh, family practice settings as well as phlebotomy only settings and now in a hospital setting. So I've kind of got a variety of backgrounds and I can tell you there's differences in all of them. Uh, the type of patients you deal with, the type of sticks that you do. Um, but I, I love the work and I was really excited when I did come back to it because it it's kind of a calling. It's it's a place that if you love it, you just you love it. Like that's been my experience with most phlebotomists that uh, you just kind of it feels like home. It's the best way to describe that. Like it's just it's a thing that you just know you're good at and you want to do. Uh, my name is Martin. Um, I've actually been here at Wesley just coming up on 20 years. Um, I started back in 2002 as a part time phlebotomist. Um, I walked around the hospital and kind of looked at uh, what my options were and decided to go back to school and became a med tech. And uh, I worked as a med tech for oh, five to seven years. The uh, position for the phlebotomy manager came open and I applied for it and lo and behold, uh, I got the job and I've been there ever since. It's been about seven years since I've been started as the manager. Um, phlebotomy has always been kind of a passion uh, since I started here back in 2002. And uh, I kind of made it full circle and came back as a manager and, and I want to help my uh, my phlebotomist drive and and move up in the hospital and do what they want to do. So that's kind of my my story. All right, so let's let's talk real quick about um, where you got to your phlebotomy certification, um, that process and, and, and how they can go about it. Because many of the kids in Kansas, especially in the greater Wichita area, had the opportunity while in school to uh, get the requirements for to be a phlebotomist. I'm actually not a certified phlebotomist. Really? Yeah, I um I started doing this uh, about 20 years ago in a doctor's office and was on the doc train. So I, while I have years and years of experience and whatnot, I didn't have to have the certification. Um, we do actually prefer that people have that now. Uh, sorry, cabbage. Yeah, we do prefer that you have the certification. It helps to give you a pay increase. Um, it's not that hard to get. We typically will hire, you know, more likely to hire if you have the certification, but 
there are some of us that are kind of grandfathered in a little bit. Um, I know that schooling is great and I definitely recommend it, but I can also tell you that the truth is phlebotomy is one of those things, and I hate to say this because it's I, I love it, but if you're just not comfortable, if you're not sure you enjoy it, it's maybe not the field path to go because we we see some people that they think they're going to enjoy it and, and you kind of get into it and you realize that that you're struggling a little bit or it's a little bit difficult. Um, but I can also say that if you do love it, it is an amazing field. It is, and you get to a variety of people. You get some, I mean, I've met some, some interesting people and just in, even in the hospital setting, getting to, to talk about, you know, experiences with them, their families, their lives. It's, it's fulfilling and it's nice to be able to know that you're helping these people get better. Yeah, it, it's a good way to make a personal connection. Um, you know, doing phlebotomy itself is not a difficult job. It's it's a skill that you can refine. Um, I will echo what Ashley says. That, you know, if, if 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 it's not if it's not something that you know is that comes easy to you, it can be difficult. But if you know if it's a skill or that you're very hands on type of person, um, it, it's easy to pick up. Um, there are a couple schools here. In Kansas, I know that uh, that offers training. I believe one of them is um, Bethel College, and I think the other one is. I, I think WSU Tech might, don't they? Uh, actually, yeah, I think WSU Tech does, and I also think um, um, Allied Health. Yeah, Allied, Allied Health does also does it. So those are those are three options that you can go get certified, take the class, and get certified. Now, for, um, for the phlebotomist that you guys hire, because you talk about. You don't have a certification on the job training, and you talk about the importance of loving it. It's hard to know how much you love it before you do it. Unfortunately. But what, what can they do now if they are interested in using this as a stepping stone to uh, other healthcare careers? What what do you, when, when talking with people and new hires, is there something that you're looking for that can help them be successful? Um, actually, I think. Wesley is starting up a program where you can actually come in and shadow for a little bit pending COVID, the status of COVID, but you can come in and actually shadow, sign an agreement, shadow for a day or two to see what it's like and see if that's something that you would even, you know, be remotely interested in. You know? Is that is that part of the observation program? I believe so, yes. Okay, which I which I believe for high school students right now is on hiatus. Because of because COVID. COVID, but for college students, I think it's open. But I don't know if all the areas. Um, Hope Helfrich, uh, un unable to be with us this morning, she would know that answer. Um, but okay, so that's that is an opportunity to get in and yes. to see that. Yes. Um, let, let's talk. I, I think people have a big, broad, general idea about what a phlebotomist does. But can you talk about what a phlebotomist does? All right. So, the, at the most basics of it, we draw blood. That's the most simplistic answer, but it's a little more complex than that. Um, part of our job is knowing lab tests, what blood tubes, you know, what they do, what they're for, what we're supposed to be drawing. We interact with patients. We provide updates to the hospital because blood drawing is awful. Most people hate it. I mean, I tell people we're probably one of the more hated physicians in the, in the uh, hospital just because it's uncomfortable. It's it's miserable. You're already sick, and now we're going to put a needle in your arm, and it's unfortunate. But if you do it right, you can make that experience painless. You can make that experience personable, and you can give people kind of a feeling that they're being cared for in ways that they just can't. Lab work is super important to healthcare. It is how doctors know what is going on with their patients. We are crucial in healthcare. Um, sometimes we get overlooked, unfortunately, because of that. But it is necessary and it is needed and and it is our job to make that experience for patients so that they want to participate and, and cooperate with us so that we get that done. Uh, so we go into patients rooms the, um, the way that our hospital currently works is that we have 4 o'clock a.m. lab that we do pretty much hospital wide and we'll get here. The phlebotomists come in the, the first shifters come in about 4 o'clock and we get our trays ready and we go out and we clear the hospital. We go patient room to patient room drawing blood. Uh, we'll go in, we'll introduce ourselves, say, you know, hey, we're here with lab. Uh, the doctor needs these orders. We try and, you know, explain what we're doing. Um, it's, uh, you know, and then, you know, they'll ask us questions like, what are these tests for? Or, 
you know, sometimes we get resistance, unfortunately, because again, people don't want to have blood drawn and they especially don't want to have blood drawn at four in the morning. Um, but it is, uh, I'm not sure what's going to close with this. Um, but like I said, we'll go in and, you know, I'm, as the basics of drawing blood is, is you put on a tourniquet, you put a needle in their vein, it's very simple. But the big part of our job is, is actually making a connection with that person so that they want us to do that, so that they're okay with having this blood drawn, so that they're understanding that we're in this to help take care of them. And with the, with the lab results, it's easier for the doctors to, to make an informed decision on their, their track of care, their process of care for the patients to, to help them get better and, and be able to go home and have a, a normal life. Uh, so, yeah, we are the face of the hospital, face of the lab, um, making that personal connection with the patient, making them comfortable with the process and having them understand why we're there and how us being there will help them in the long run. You uh, talked about um, the observation opportunities to know before, but for those that you hire, is there an orientation period? Is there on the job training? You talked about okay. the importance of it. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. do, do you see, and, and I don't mean to point any fingers at any program, but do you do you see a gap between the education certification that some of your young phlebotomists or new phlebotomists have compared to the training that they need in the hospital? Um, and if not, that's fine. No, but I, I don't really think so. Great. Yeah, yeah, I don't really think so. I mean, being certified is definitely a plus, um, but on on the job, hands on experience is always, you know, it's real life. I mean, you, you know, you, you get exposed to everything, you know, or in, in school, you get the basic information. And then when you come in and you work, you see all the ancillary stuff that's involved with the basic stuff that you've learned in, in, in school. So so when you hire someone, um, wh what is that process like? Do they shadow somebody for a bit? Do they work with someone? Is there, yeah. talk about that process. Uh, so the way that we do it is it's a couple interviews to make sure that you're going to be a good fit. Um, once you're hired on, we assign you with a senior phlebotomist, um, a phlebotomist too, usually, uh, who has, experience because we have two levels of training so we have your basics and then we have what are called sleeve twos which are certified to draw blood on children on babies basically anybody that needs blood drawn they have the qualifications to draw them on it takes usually a couple months before you become a sleeve two um but we assign you with senior staff and you go around with them for two to three weeks depending on kind of depends on how quickly you pick it up some people pick it up that fast they're just hands-on some people it takes a little bit longer. Both of those are perfectly acceptable. We're not expecting anybody to just come in to be a rock star. It is, it is consuming. It is a lot to learn, not just the hands-on parts of, of phlebotomy itself, but this is a big hospital. I have been here a year and I'm gonna be honest, I still don't know my way around half of this place. <laughs> it is large, yes. So that is part of it. We definitely we want to make sure that by the time we put you out there, you're comfortable and you're ready and you're you're confident in your ability and we certainly because we want everybody that comes in here to succeed that is the biggest thing for us it doesn't do us any good to train you and put you out there and then have you flounder that makes us look bad it makes you look bad it's a horrible experience for everybody involved so we make sure that you you train on not just blood draws but on our mobile lab system because we have a handheld system that is patient identifiers uh, we make sure you train on hospital areas um train on basic tubes basic techniques just all the stuff that you need to know so that you're comfortable and confident in doing your job. Um, also, yeah, also with the computer process. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, usually it takes about, you know, four to six months to become really proficient at being a flea with one, which would be adults only. Um, basically, once you become proficient with the, as a flea one, we start working with you to, to start taking care of babies and stuff like that. Um, once you're proficient with taking care of babies, that's when we promote you to a fleet too. And obviously there's a pay raise that, uh, that comes with that because your job is a little bit more complex, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's very doable. It's, it's a lot of fun. 
um, you'd have a lot of patient interaction. And you know, like I said, I came back to phlebotomy as a manager because this is my passion. And, and you know, it's an opportunity to take care of patients. It's, it's, it's a good, it's a good field to be in. Um, requirements to be a phlebotomist. Minimum requirements. Are you familiar with? Uh, you have to be 18, and you have to have a high school diploma. Basic life support training for that? No, nope. we used to. We did, we got rid of that requirement. Uh, uh, preferred skill is or preferred is a, a phlebotomy certification, yeah, but yeah, not a required skill. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the certification is is not required. Um, I like to have new employees, you know, certified or have some type of experience. Um, I, we can't hire you right off the street without any experience. Um, but schooling is preferred, and I believe it's a. I want to say it's a six or twelve week program is what it is. I don't remember for sure, um, but definitely if you're interested, reach out to one of the, the you know Wichita Tech or um, uh, one of the other schools in in the state that that offers phlebotomy training. Uh, a couple things before we finish. Um, this, if, if someone chooses, this can be an entry level stepping stone to a healthcare career. Um, so let let's let's talk about what the opportunities are and where someone can go from here. Okay, so I actually got into healthcare. Um, my original career track was pre med. Now I've had some life setbacks that have changed that a little bit, but that doesn't mean that I still have a lot of options open for me. Um, I know of at least two of our employees right now that are in nursing school. Um, like Martin was saying, he used this and he actually went into being a med tech. So there's people will go from here and they'll go directly into the laboratory. Once you're in this field, like having phlebotomy in, in your background, having them in your, your skill set looks so good in pretty much any medical field you go to. We have phlebotomists that, that we had one that got accepted to medical school this last summer. So just phlebotomy is such a great stepping stone into the medical field as, as a whole. And it really just opens your path because Everybody, I mean, when you're in medical, especially when you're on the clinical side, you want to draw blood, you want to be good at drawing blood. It's kind of necessary. So if you can go, hey, I have this skill set, I have this ability, it looks good on across the board with like with laboratory work, with nursing work, with with doctor work, uh, just anything that you're going to do clinicals because drawing blood is so crucial in the healthcare setting. Okay. Um there are tuition reimbursement opportunities for those who want to uh, further their education. Yeah, talk about that. Um, as a as a part time to full time employee, Wesley offers five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars a year of uh, tuition reimbursement. Um, I think the minimum requirement to get the tuition reimbursement is a C or better. Um, it used to be a B or better, but they they lowered that a little bit, made it a C or better. Um, it's a great opportunity to come into the hospital in an entry level position, um, work around the hospital, see what's available, see what you like, uh, go back to school and use the tuition reimbursement to uh, to further your education and move up into the uh, into the medical field to to help patients live better lives. Um, what's the hardest part of your job as a phlebotomist? Um, there's a couple of aspects of that. One, dealing with extremely sick individuals um, in the sense of the technical side, the harder, like the sicker you are, the harder you are to stick uh, due to dehydration or uh, inflammation, swelling, things like that. Um, some of the other parts, things that they don't talk to you about that maybe you should is things like we deal with traumas, we deal with codes. So we deal with, you know, patient passing. That's something that they don't necessarily give you information about, and, and it is something that's important that you need to know. Um, COVID is a big problem. Uh, we are seeing more and more cases of it. It is time consuming and it's kind of exhausting. And, and to say that, you know, you're not gonna come in with realization and, and expectations of that would be kind of leading you on the wrong path. You should be aware that we are in COVID times. Um, but again, these are things that are compared to the fulfilling and the rewarding and just the job itself, they're kind of minor inconveniences. You learn to get past them, you work through them, you become better at your job, you become more adapted at donning and doffing all of your PPE, 
you just kind of overcome and, and the job is fulfilling enough to make up for those deficiencies. Yeah, yeah, that basically sums it up. Um, Ashley, you mentioned COVID. Uh, what, what impact has COVID had on your position, your, your jobs and what you've seen at the hospital? Because the hospital is busier. Yeah. And right now with the current surge, it's just as busy, if not busier, than we were during the last peak in January of last year. Yeah. yeah. So what, what impact does it have on phlebotomists? Um, one of the big ones is, again, I've talked about the donning and doffing of PPE. It is necessary. When we go into patient rooms, we want to make sure that we're as prepared and, and protected as we can be to keep us from getting COVID. Unfortunately, it is spreading through the employees like wildfire right now. Um, that involves wearing an N95 mask, that involves wearing a gown, that involves gloves, that depending, you know, it, it adds extra layers of protection. Those take time. We, again, I, I mentioned earlier that we draw blood at four o'clock. We're on time limits because we want to get that blood uh, turned around as fast as we can so the doctors have results by the time they start making their rounds. We go from an average of what, seven to eight minutes now to? Yeah, 12, 12 to 13 minutes so, per patient. Yeah, so we're adding so at least definitely slow us down a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so it's it's almost double. Yeah, yeah. which which has a trickle down effect um, across the board. I mean, yes. yeah, absolutely. We are not getting our lab turned around as time. We're 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 getting overloaded with patients that need blood work when they need blood work. We're it is slowing us down. It is putting an impact on the hospital, and it is unfortunately just something we have to deal with. Because it's just, I mean, we're going as fast as we can. We're doing as much as we can, but. These are stressful times. Nick, um, I, I know you jumped on late, um, which is fine. Happy to have you on. Um, do you or anyone uh, with you have any questions for either Ashley or Martin about phlebotomy? Actually, I'm by myself. I couldn't get any students out of, out of their other classes uh, to watch this just yet. So I'm waiting for that, that email. If you want to send the email, uh, the yeah. video, great. Um, I do have several kids that are interested in the medical field. Um, they really want to do some internships. Are you guys offering internships or, or job shadowing? Um, I don't know that we are right at the moment with the uh, with the surge in co with COVID. Um, I would definitely have to get with Hope Helfridge on that and kind of find out what the status of it is and and, and kind of um, see how things are, are you're going to be moving forward. Yeah. So um, Nick, we were hopeful. Um, probably in October, November, that we were going to reevaluate around this time to kind of see what it was like after the holidays. Unfortunately, the latest surge has pushed back all of those plans to where um, we've gone back to some protocols here at the hospital that uh, we haven't had in place for a year, yeah. Yeah. just okay. for, for patient safety and for our own employee safety, because as Ashley mentioned, um, this variant is so... Um, virulent, variant. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, yeah. it's easily transmittable. It, it's yeah. highly infectious. And, yeah. and so, um, we, we have several employees who are out. Um, and so just to be able to care for the patients that we have right now is, is, is a challenge. Oh yeah. It's very daunting. And, and so bringing in high school students, that's going to have to be a conversation that we, um, reevaluate. February, March, and maybe April to where I'm not sure if it would be able to happen this school year. Though we do have other opportunities through these virtual Q&As, through Wesley Career Launch, um, right. that, that we can do for, for some students. And we can stay in touch about those details as, uh, as we move forward. That would be awesome. I know um, a coworker of mine at West High says that they have a CNA program. I'm not sure if it's with you guys or not. Um, I was speaking with some other teachers here in Northwest and we would love to have a program um, maybe to, you know, kind of like a pipeline to have some kids going to CNAs or CMAs or whatever program would be available for healthcare. Yeah. Well, I know once, once we can safely feel like we can get, you know, students back in and we're going to, we're going to be right on top of it. Sounds yeah. good. And, and, and Nick, um, we are in conversations with Kelly Bielefeld at the Wichita School District um, to to talk about different ways that we can make this uh, available to your students. Those conversations also include WSU Tech. So right. We we are trying to help in that way. So yeah. 
I'm, um, I'm Wednesday, Wednesday after school. I'm taking a student up to WSU Tech. That's one of my students who are, is interested in healthcare. So I'm taking her uh, Wednesday after school so she can get a tour of the campus and whatnot. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, Martin, Ashley, anything else you guys want to add before we end this session? Um, can't think of anything. I, I would say if you enjoy healthcare, if you enjoy, uh, you know, hands on things like that, I would definitely recommend looking into phlebotomy or even CNA, which part of the PCT is in here. But it's a rewarding career field that that I love and I definitely recommend it to people if you have any kind of passion about it. All right. Sorry, Martin, did I cut you off? No, you're good. Okay. All right. So, so thank you very much. Uh, phlebotomy, just 1 entry level opportunity entry level uh, way to get your foot in the door into healthcare. As always, thank you very much for your time. Please, please, please fill out the evaluation. Um, hopefully your teacher provided that to you. That evaluation is what helps us. Uh, improve and to know which topic to discuss. Uh, we'll make sure that your teacher has the next one. So plan on it. Uh, the second Tuesday in March or February. I forget what month we're in. <laughs> That's so a long year already. Yeah, I know. I, that's true. true. Yeah. yeah, 11 days in and it feels like a month. <laughs> um, so yeah, so please be safe out there. Uh, wear a mask even if it's not cool. And yeah, we, we encourage everyone to wear a mask and to get yeah. vaccinated. Wash your hands. Wash yes. your hands, absolutely. Six yep. feet apart. Yep. I mean, we're, we're wearing these masks today and, and haven't in the past just because of how transmittable this latest variant is. And we're just trying to be cautious. So thank you very much. We hope you guys have a great day. We appreciate you. Good luck. Take care. Thank you.